The gentleman from Louisiana is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank Chairman Smith for, uh, for the time. Mr. Speaker, I've listened to this debate and heard so many things that are simply misunderstandings or maybe just intentionally telling things that aren't true. Um, my mom used to say when I was growing up, uh, she would ask me, is it going to take an act of Congress for you to clean your room? She would say it all the time. Is it going to take an act of Congress for you to clean your room? And I don't know what she meant because I thought my room was pretty clean. But what she meant is that is it going to take the, the earth, wind, and stars all moving, mountains moving, in order for you to act? Mr. Speaker, this has been 40 years. This has been 40 years of treating people differently, discriminating against a certain set of workers. These are police officers. These are teachers. These are firefighters and other public servants. Mr. Speaker, I worked, I worked side by side with these folks. They're not people that are overpaid. They're not people that are underworked. Police officers, think about the crime issue, the defund police issue, the safety of our communities. They are integral to our state. They're integral to our nation. We need to treat them fairly, respectfully, and that means by not treating them differently, discriminating against them and their benefits. Teachers, they're the ones who train the next generation. Firefighters, who are you going to call when your house is on fire? And these are the very people whose benefits we're cutting. Mr. Speaker, I've heard people sit here and say the solvency of the Social Security Trust Fund is going is to move forward six months with this bill. Mr. Speaker, the solvency has been delayed years because you've stolen from these people. Do you not understand math? This number right here, the Congressional Budget Office, $195 billion, you know what that number is? That's the number that you're going to be stealing from these same public servants over the next 10 years if you don't fix this. So we can sit here and we can talk about all these numbers and math. Here's the reality. You have stolen somewhere probably between six and $700 billion in Social Security benefits from police officers, teachers, firefighters, and other public servants. If you don't pass this, the Congressional Budget Office says you're going to steal another $995 billion. You know, an, inter an interesting nugget that was in the Congressional Budget Office's evaluation is they also said, if you actually pass this law, you're going to save money on your social welfare programs because you're going to lift people out of poverty and they'll no longer be dependent upon our social welfare programs. Mr. Speaker, we can't keep doing this. I heard people talking about penalizing people and taxes and all that stuff. Let me tell you what's happening. There is a group of people right now that effectively are paying a higher tax than anyone else. That's what's happening. And it is the reason why the Social Security Trust Fund is going to remain solvent for years longer. It's unfair. It's unjust. And I'm going to say it again. This is a community of people that cannot afford this. This is a community of people that are some of the hardest working folks in our community, and they have been stolen from for 40 years. Very simply, very simply, Mr. Speaker, here's the scenario. Let's say that Chairman Smith and I were both security guards. We got paid the same amount of money over the same period of time. After 20 years, I say I'm out, and I go back and I help to raise family. Mr. Smith goes on, Chairman Smith goes on to become a sheriff's deputy, and he does it for 10 years. When he retires, when we retire on the same exact date, my Social Security benefits may be $1,500, $1,800 more. Why? Why? We paid the same amount, same period of time, into the Social Security Trust Fund. Mr. Speaker, look, there are folks that have tried to throw up other legislation and say that that, that these other alternatives are the right way to go. Mr. Speaker, there is one bill, there is one bill in this Congress that has a majority of Republicans and a majority of Democrats. I don't know the number right now. I know recently it was the most co-sponsored bill in all of Congress with over 12,000 bills introduced. The most co-sponsored bill. And you know what? We didn't go through the regular committee process. I do want to thank Chairman Smith for working with us. But you know what we did? We had a hearing in Louisiana. We had a hearing in Washington, D.C. We negotiated for months trying to get there, and we couldn't. 
But there's one package that has the support of the majority of Republicans, the majority of Democrats, and will fix this once and for all. How in the world we're trying to beat up on the bill that is the most co-sponsored bill in Congress? My friend Mr. Larson was talking about the divisiveness, the polarization. My gosh, we have finally come together on something. Let's pass this bill. Let's show America that we can do what's right and what's just. And let's make sure this bill gets through the Senate, gets to the president's desk, and it doesn't take another 40 years to do what's right. Yield back.